Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Read Chinese Poetry podcast. I'm Zhong Qicai, the program host. In this podcast program, my colleagues and I aim to introduce cutting-edge scholarship on Chinese poetry to a broad general audience. We will present 52 episodes covering the major poetic genres developed over China's long history. Each episode features close reading of one or more of the best-known Chinese poems, with an aim to illuminate their literary greatness and cultural significance. For all the discussed poems, Chinese texts, English translation, romanization, and brief notes are provided at our website, howtoreadchinesepoetry.com. By following the 52 episodes, listeners will gain a bird's eye view of the thematic, formal, and generic evolution of Chinese poetry from antiquity to the modern era. Instruct and delight is what we wish to accomplish in each talk. Without further ado, let's begin. Episode 28 The poet with whom Du Fu is often paired is his friend Li Bai, widely known as the poet immortal. Widely hailed as the two greatest Chinese poets, the debate continues unabated as to which is greater. They have often been perceived to be diametrically opposite types. Du Fu is sober, earnest, and morally committed while Li Bai is inebriated, carefree, and transcendent. Also, such a simple dichotomy inevitably obscure the complexity of the two poets' life and works. He has nonetheless taken hold of the popular imagination. Consequently, they are both best remembered for those works that reveal these character traits. While many of Du Fu's great poems are Lu Si's works, most of Li Bai's best loved and most widely recited works are ancient style poems. The highly restrictive Lu Si form seems ill-suited to Li Bai's unbridled temperament and poetic style. Yet, he wrote a number of Lu Si poems in which we nonetheless capture a glimpse of the quintessential Li Bai. Climbing the Yueyang Tower with Xia Shi. From the tower I look afar to where the Yueyang region ends. The river winds along to where the Dongting Lake opens. The wild geese, taking along the heart's sorrow, have gone. The mountains, carrying the fine moon in their beak, come. In the midst of clouds, I reach the honored guest's bed. In heaven above, I receive the passing wine cup. After I have gotten drunk, a cool wind rises, blowing on me, sending my sleeves dancing and fluttering. The opening couplet shows the poet in the act of viewing a panoramic thing. In the second couplet, his gaze shifts to two concrete images. The flying wild geese, a common image for homesickness, are here used to signify the relief of homesickness, or the heart's sorrow. This transformation of a conventional image is followed by a sudden flight of imagination. The mountains have become a giant bird, carrying the fine moon in its beak and flying towards us. The third couplet engineers a turn quite characteristic of the poet immortal. A fly into the celestial world. Taking the poet as the implicit subject, however, we can render the couplet as follows. 
In the midst of the clouds, I reach the honor guest bed. In heaven above, I receive the passing wine cup. The appearance of the poet in the final couplets make this reading sensible and appropriate. Here, Li Bai does not make men and nature equal companions, as Du Fu does, but elevates the man, or rather himself, above nature to the extent that he becomes an immortal, residing in the midst of clouds and receiving a passing wine cup in heaven. Like Du Fu, he avails himself a prefer. Like Du Fu, he avails himself a personification. But for him, personification is largely a means of turning nature into a joyful playmate. The wild geese that take away the hard sorrow, and the mountain that bring in the fine moon for enjoyment, become his imagined playmates. As Li Bai consistently endows nature with his unique character traits. It is little wonder that most of the personifying verbs in his poem are not those of grief and lamentation, but they depict, instead, energetic, sprightly, and often magical action. In transforming nature into a playmate at his bidding, he in fact elevates himself to the status of the creator or the master of the universe. He is not at all shy about this, and in fact speaks explicitly in the voice of the heavenly master in a poem, like a quote, "Drinking along under the moon." Unquote. Yue Xia Du Zuo. A lively self-deification as the law of the universe is considered by many as the hallmark of Li Bai's greatest poem. At its very least. It sets his poems apart from the earlier quotidian poems on the roaming immortals, Yu Xianshi, and helps him earn the title a poet immortal. Moreover, it inspired the great Si poems of heroic abandon by Su Si and Xin Xi Ji. This is the end of episode twenty-eight. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy the talk. Let us relax and listen to a reading of the poem in Mandarin. 雨下十二登月阳楼，李白。楼观月阳近，川迥洞庭开。雁影愁新去，山闲好月来。云间连下闼，天上皆行悲。最后凉风起，吹人舞袖回。